Okay, I would like to welcome you again to another amazing testimony. Tonight, we're privileged to have Beth Henricus, who has quite a story to share with us. Um, and I've known Beth for, I don't know how long we've known each other, but quite a while. Going on 20 years, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing how you create these friendships. We were just talking about that. But her health story is um, phenomenal. Beth is from Toronto, well, around Toronto, Ontario, mm -hmm. and she just shared some cool things with us now, but we're not going to go into that. So, Beth, if you want to take it away and share your story, I'm looking thank forward you. to it. I'd love to. I want to thank you so much for inviting me. We had a little bit of uh, back and forth about the dates, but I'm so glad that we were able to make it happen, Nina. I really do enjoy the Zoom calls, and I love that PJ introduced herself specifically. I love that. It's so nice to get to know new people, especially Shaq, because I feel like we're family. Even if we're just now meeting, we're family, so it makes it easier and more fun to meet. So thanks so much. I'm happy to share my story. What I thought I'd do is I've got a few pictures and stuff which may help you sort of follow what my story is. And there is a bit here and there about the business, but it's mainly about my life and how I got to the spot I'm in and how I made a huge turnaround approximately 20 years ago now when I met Andre. So let me see. Everybody cross your fingers and uh, hopefully this will work. Do it. Let's try it. There you go. You see a picture? Yep. So far, so good. And you know what? I've showed you the last picture first. That wasn't right. Here we go. Let's try this. Why don't you hit on the slideshow? There. Yep, there How's you. that? Awesome. Now, can you see? Very good. Now, I love this. Uh, now, Mae West, she's the one that always said, why don't you come over and see me sometime? Now, I'm, I love, love, love movies and old movies. And so this is why I love this quote from Mae West. You only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. And I want to add to that, that your life starts whenever you decide it will. That's when it starts. It's not when you're born. I mean, yes, a lot of things happen to you when you're born, and a lot of things affect you as you grow up. In fact, this past weekend, we were in the seminar with Richard Blissbrook, and he was talking about how things that happened to you before you were five years old can affect your entire life. And you have to decide... Am I, is this five-year-old or younger child going to run my life and my business, or am I going to choose to start living right now? And I don't care. Dr. Stackley started the business when he was 63. I guess I can start my life over at 45. So that's kind of what I did. So this, that's what I started with, and it, you'll see how it goes. But um, these are just a few pictures from my growing up. This first one is in 1959. You can see me with my mama and my brother, Brian. This is in 1959. Here's another picture. There were six of us all together, eventually. And um, it's, I want you to look at the dog there. That, that dog's name was Bubbles. You'll see something, somebody that looks like him later on. But this is my entire family in 1966. So I was the oldest of the group. I was the oldest of six, and of course, since I was the oldest of six, if anything went wrong, if there was any babysitting to be done, of course, that was my job. And then, of course, my brothers, you know, when they got old enough, they'd think of ways to get me in trouble when mom and dad got home. And I stressed out. But this is important to know because in my life, I've always had to be in charge, and I'm really not comfortable with that. But I've had to make it work because of the way that my life is. This next picture is in 2010, and this is Andre, and this is our 10th anniversary. And uh, we went with some friends of ours, and he owns this antique car. We had so much fun. But I just, I just want you to know how much my life changed from when I was little to now. And this last picture is, is a, a picture of a house that we live in now. Fortunately, the snow is all gone, but that's where we live. And we were so, so fortunate. When we got married in 2001, we were over $130,000 in debt. But because of Shackley, in 2011, we moved into this house debt-free. So I'm really, really grateful for that. Now, this is just a little picture of my life. These are the major portion of the surgeries that I've had in my life. And it's a list that I take. I've had more than 80 
to date. That's eight zero, not one eight. More than 80 surgeries in my life. And because of feeling responsible and the stress of being responsible, a lot of times I, you know, created problems for myself. And of course I wasn't eating right. I couldn't afford to eat right. Mostly bread and sugar and you understand, you know, pasta's cheap. And so that's what we ate because when you've got six children and only one person bringing in an income and it's not that big, it's a pastor's income most of the time, we just kind of had to make do. And you know, we had a big porch on the front of our house and a lot of times at night people would leave food or clothing and mostly it was cans and cereals and stuff that, you know, that lasts. But people knew that we were in a hard way and so they would help us out with that. But you didn't even have to read this. It's a little scary just having a list like that. I just want to talk about three ladies in our group who chose not to use Shackley because I didn't realize what a big decision I made when I said yes to Shackley. And I said, yes, I'm gonna change my life. These are three ladies that we know, and they're in from our little team with Andre and I. This first gal is a former student of mine. And um, she called me, oh, three years ago or so, I saw her on Facebook and she was just kind of, emptying out. She was upset. She was stressed. Things were not good. She wasn't feeling well. She was just tired all the time. And so I said, listen, sweetheart, you know, give me a call. Let's just talk and let me see. And I just asked her a lot of questions about how she was feeling, what she was going through. Well, she said the doctor says she's fine. And um, so she decided not to talk with me about Shackley. This next gal was a minister in Toronto. And she had a really nice big church, but she also was an entrepreneur and made lots and lots of money. And so a friend of hers who was in our, biz our business already referred her and she, she was dying of stage four lung cancer. She had already beat, you know how people say they beat it? Had already beat cancer twice, breast cancer and something else. I don't remember the other one but she was now dealing with stage four lung cancer. The first time we saw her, she had a nurse 24 seven. She could not get up and down from a sofa or a bed or a chair by herself. She had to have help. She could not go up and down the stairs. She had one of those chairs that lifted her up and down, could not go to the washroom by herself. And she was very, very gray and thin. Well, a couple of weeks, we took her picture because she said, yes, she was going to do it no matter what it cost, she was going to do it. Well, a couple of weeks later, we saw her again, and she was pink. And in fact, five weeks after she started her Shackley, she called up the friend who referred her and yelled at her. I mean, yelled. Now, do you remember I said she had lung cancer? She could barely speak before. Now she's yelling at her friend, and her friend was just laughing. She was yelling at her on the phone. She was just laughing. The third gal is a gal who got a diagnosis that was that said she's going to go blind there was nothing she could do about it and there was something in her eyes that was forcing anyway she, her tear ducts were clogged or i don't understand it but andre happened to see the diagnosis from the doctor and he was so excited because we've had two cases already of the exact diagnosis who were now seeing fine so we were anxious to share with her the uh, program, the Shackley program. This first gal was a former student named Erin Drudge. She died one year later after she refused to talk to me of a heart attack at 37 with three small children. Made me just sick, but she, she just decided not to try. I mean, everybody has a right to say no, but, and it's tough, isn't it? That's the toughest case when you got somebody that says no, but sometimes people just won't, but, she also passed away because about, about two months before she died, she called us very angry and said, oh, I could get this stuff so much cheaper. You're trying to trick me, blah, blah, blah. We went to her funeral two months later because she tried something cheaper and she just went down very quickly. This last lady is my mama and um, she is now 92 and she is almost completely blind. She can't find anything. She's very, in fact, we're, thinking we have to put her in more. She's in a, assisted living, but anyway, I just want, to, want you to see that 
A lot of people say no. And you know what? There's not a thing we can do. And especially when it's somebody you love and it's your mom. Wow, it hurts when they say no. Well, here is somebody who did say yes. And I actually got a life back that the doctors told me I would never have. At 45, because of the severity of my arthritis, they were saying, you are going to be stuck for your life. That's just how it is. You're going to be on more and more drugs. You're going to end up in a nursing home because you will not be able to take care of yourself. So here's the good news. Enjoy your life while you can because right now you can travel and do things, but it's not going to be for very long. So enjoy your life while you can. Well, that was about three weeks before I met Andre. Can you see the dates on these pictures? Can you see them? This first one was Valentine's Day of 2000. I met Andre in August of 2000. And so it was pretty quickly after the doctor said, forget it. And then this next picture, I obviously said yes. I was more than 100 pounds lighter. My blood pressure was now making sense. Everything was turning around. It was fantastic. And um, this is in Easter of 2004. So just about five years after I started the Shackley program, my life was completely changed. And I'm traveling, we're going on cruises, we were winning Shackley trips. It was fabulous. And I was able to do the walking I needed to do and get where I needed to go. So I'm really, really thrilled about that. So here are just some sort of comparison pictures over my journey. In 1997, I'm sitting here on the steps of St. Paul's Cathedral. It was the same trip that we visited Notre Dame. Did y'all hear about Notre Dame burning? Yeah, about a week ago or so. But anyway, we went on this trip to that. But I was unable to do any of the tours with my students. I could not go with them. I'd have to hand them papers and say, meet me back here at this time. So that's what I'm doing. I'm getting their, collecting their passports and handing out maps and saying, this is when you get back. Because I had to wait on the steps. I couldn't keep up with the tour guide. I weighed approximately 265 at the time, and I'm only five foot two, so that's a lot of weight. Then in 2000, you've seen this picture before, but this is Valentine's Day 2000. I was about maybe 235, 240, somewhere in that area. I had lost some weight on my own, but it was very, very difficult. This next one is when I married Mr. Henriquez, and this is, I was down to 170. I was thrilled, absolutely thrilled to be down. And then in 2004, the second picture you saw, down to 150. And I'm telling you, that is just amazing to feel. Like when you think you're dying, you never ever think you're going to, not only are you not going to die, you're going to get better and better and be able to do more and more as you get older. I'm now 65, and I'm telling you, I feel so much better than I did at 45. It's amazing. And it gives me hope for 85, right? 20 more years. So that's what I'm hoping for. Just wanted to share with you my grandkids, because what kind of grandmother would I be if I didn't? This is my daughter, Amanda, and her husband, Dustin. And there are three of these children that are adopted. I'll bet you can guess the little Chinese boy in the front is one of them, but I'll bet you can't guess the other two. Can you guess the other two? Kadra and Natalie are actually either full or half sisters. We're not sure. But when they got Natalie, they got her 10 weeks old, and she weighed less than her birth weight at 10 weeks old. The parents couldn't afford the milk. They were even poorer than I was growing up. So they was just putting a little milk in a bottle of water, and that's all she was existing on. So it was pretty sad. Kadra was two and a half, and she was, was born with fetal alcohol syndrome. And, um, but she's doing, look at these beautiful, beautiful, healthy kids. They're all on Shackley today. And I love it, love it, love it. Melina and Garrick were the two that were born to my daughter and her husband. And here is, there is a family all grown up now. And we're at my other daughter's wedding. This is Lauren and her new husband, Garrick. They had a medieval wedding. It was really quite fun. But I'm telling you, honestly, my daughter was two when the doctors told me, this is, this is it. Your life is going to get worse from here out, so enjoy it while you can. But look at this. This is amazing. And see, I even got dressed and went to the wedding all by myself. It was fabulous. And then here you can see my handsome husband, Andre, and my mama, my, the one that I showed you in one of the pictures there, who is, she is blind. But she's, she's making the best of it, even though she wouldn't take her shackly. She's doing the best she can. 
these are just some little things that, that are important to me. I love, I love my dog. I'm so crazy about my dog. And there's Dexter. You can see him. And with my daughter, Lauren, they were best buds until she went off to college and then got married. And then um, I'm a big fan of, like I said, old movies and old TV shows. And you know who this is? You girls are probably not old enough to know. Sandy, do you? Yeah, she says, she, yeah, she does. She knows it's Sandy Griffith. So we went to Mount Airy. Sandy, if you love Andy Griffith, Mount Airy is for everyone that loves that show. Amazing. I actually got to go in a car and drive around. And I'm telling you, this is only four years ago that this happened. I never dreamed I'd be able to do that. So I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled with that. We are very, very busy with um, Young Life, which is an organization that is uh, – it helps kids, and the idea is we're missionaries in reverse with kids. And what we do is we go to them instead of asking them to come to church, because kids don't go to church anymore. So what we do is we help them, and we help them get them counselors, mentors, people that help them go in the right direction and to, to do the things that they really want to do. So it's something that we truly, truly love. So let me um, go back, and this is my this is kind of sums up my life. I just feel like I have made so many mistakes. My health was worse and worse. And I don't know about you, but some people think God's punishing them if they're sick. And I kind of thought that. Truth is, I had no idea how to take care of my health. So I was doing a lot of apologizing to a lot of people. And I was struggling with a lot of illness, as you already know. So let me just check. The, the most, the most uh, nutritious food that I got growing up was when we went to grandpa and grandma's because grandpa grew his own amazing vegetables. No, there was no toxins that they put on food at that time. And oh my goodness, we used to pull a carrot out of the ground, take it in, wash it and eat it just like that. Oh, so delicious and so much nutrient in that food. So that was pretty neat. Now I was only 17 when I was diagnosed with this, um, it's a really rather aggressive form of arthritis. Um, there are actually more than two kinds of arthritis. Perhaps you know this, but I always thought there's just two kinds, the osteoarthritis and the rheumatoid. But actually, there are over 200 kinds of osteoarthritis. Did you, Nina knew that. I can see that. That's, that's, I had no idea until I was diagnosed. And it was, it's a really severe. It's in the family, so it's in the genes. And basically, it eats holes in the bones rather rapidly and aggressively. And so this is why I've had, one reason I've had a lot of surgeries is because I would fall and um, stuff would break. There'd be holes in it, had to be replaced. So I have one artificial knee and two artificial hips. Now, when Andre and I met, only two weeks after we met, did I have my right or my left knee replaced. I think if I had met him a year earlier, I'd have both of my knees at this point. So um, hmm, not sure what happened there, but we lost the picture, but it doesn't matter. Um, but at 17, they're telling me, this is how your life is going to be. And I just kept uh, getting worse and worse and worse. I even struggled in school. I missed most of my grade 12 year because I fell off the balance beam in gymnastics and had done such terrible damage to my bones, in my knees, and in my back. I didn't realize the damage in my spine until I was about 30-something, and the pain was just, I just couldn't stand it and couldn't figure out where it came from. But I believed my doctor was right, and so that's why I was on nine prescription drugs every day, four handfuls a day of nine prescription drugs. And when Andre first saw those, he thought they were vitamins. And he was pretty excited. Whoa, he says, what are you taking? Because I took them right after dinner. And I said, no, these are drugs. And my doctor says, I'm going to be on them the rest of my life, including several more. And I was quite angry with him for saying to me that a vitamin was going to fix me. He didn't know me. You know, this was a first date. He should get to know me instead of telling me about vitamins. Oh, well, that's what happened. And I just thought there was no vitamin that could possibly fix me after all those surgeries and all the stuff that I had been through. And at this time, obviously, I'm a single mom now. My husband left me for someone younger and blonder. And you know what? It's just what happens sometimes. You just live with it. And I really literally thought my life was over because my health was bad. I was hugely overweight. Who would want me? And I had this little girl, too. So I didn't think anybody would want me. But guess what? 
That's not how it happened. That's not how it played out. So in 2004, the year of the second picture when I showed you the comparison picture, we found a doctor in Newmarket who specializes in helping people sort of diagnose what's going on in their bodies. And he does lots and lots of testing, blood work and such. And so we found this guy through a friend of ours. And um, he did all this blood work and all these tests. And when he came back in the room, we went back a couple of weeks later for the results. And he said to me, there is no way that you took that much medicine for that long and there is no way you've had that many surgeries and you're in this good of health. He could not believe it. He was totally shocked by it. And he said, look, I don't know what's going on here. He says, it's what the test says. I can't believe it. Keep doing whatever you're doing. It's fantastic. And so we left there. But it was just like the most amazing report we could have heard. Because before my my cholesterol was really high. My blood pressure was, my blood pressure was usually on a good day. It was like between 160 and 180 on the top. And on the bottom, if it was under 100, that was a really good day for me. So amazing that my blood pressure is now normal, absolutely normal. And people say to me, are you, are you taking some drug? I mean, your blood pressure just doesn't go down like that. That's what doctors say, right? But the truth is, we know it can happen that way. So I'm absolutely thrilled with the results and with the life that I'm able to lead. And um, I still do have to deal with the pain from the nerve damage because not only did I have nerve damage in my spine, but I also had nerve damage um, in my hips because I told you I had three hip surgeries in two years. The second surgery, they used faulty parts. And the parts tore four major muscle groups in my bum, in my leg, and in my groin. Because, the, do you know how a hip replacement works? There's like a, the ball, and then it goes into the cup like this. And then on the ball, there are spikes, right? Little spikes. And they just stick in the bone, and then the bone grows around it, and then it you know, it stays there like your real bone. Well, the spikes never ever went in. They were two centimeters away from the bone. And so for 15 months, while I was complaining and they were saying, I don't see anything wrong, it tore those four muscle groups and it just kept tearing every time I would walk, it would tear. So I still do deal with that. However, my health is so good, my weight is down, I went to Florida. I, I went out alligator hunting in Florida. We got up on the airboat. I'm going on and off the train to go here and there around Florida to see things. I walked all day at Epcot with a former student of mine. No appliances. I'm telling you, this is just too good to be true. God is good. I tell people I have gas. I have God, Andre, and Shackley. Andre's mom was a very, very proper woman. She hated when I said that, but I still do. I still have gas. I have got Andre and Shackley, and my life is so much better because of it. And it's a lot of fun. So do, do you have any questions? What would you like to know? I didn't want to bore you with too many details, but I'd love to share with you anything you'd like to know. Beth, I love you. I love your... I, you know, when you tell stories about everything that you have been through... And yes, you still have a little residual, mm -hmm. but you know, to think, where would I be if my body had not rebuilt? Oh my goodness. See, I think that all the time, and anytime I do anything that's wonderful, which is a lot, I say, I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe I'm doing this. Yeah. Start believing it. So does I do. I do. <laughs> Even when I say I can't believe it, I mean, I, I'm amazed. I know. I know. Um, questions for yes, PJ. PJ, go ahead. Make sure you unmute yourself, dear. I want to hear you. There you go. Um, I know several people with different eye disorders, and some of them have the tear duct problems. Mm -hmm. them. And what was the name of the condition that your mother had in her eyes that Andre said had other people been helped with Shackley? Uh huh. Uh huh. 
it is a disease where the, I can't tell you the name. Andre might be able to tell you the name. I'll see if he can help. But it basically, it shuts the tear ducts and the fluid in the back of the eye can't get out. It can't drain into her body behind and it can't come out through the tears. And so she would get infection and it just, it builds and builds and builds. And then it pushes against the nerves in the back of the eye and shuts them off, literally. So that's why she can't see. Mm-hmm. because they've literally been shut off. And if they've been shut off so many times, I mean, the doctor would stick needles in there and drain it. But, mm-hmm. and it's just horrendous what she tells me when I hear about what she goes through. Oh, mm-hmm. oh my word. I mean, she's wide awake and he's poking needles in her eyes to drain it, to drain out the fluid. Or this last week she had, he went in and it's the blind eye that he's still working on, but she's got an infection in it now and it won't come out. I mean, it just, the, the antibiotics aren't helping. And she gets calcium deposits in the blind eye. So he has to put the needle in and pull those t- deposits out with the needle. It's just crazy what my poor mama goes through. And I get, sometimes I'm real mad at her because why wouldn't she just try it? Yeah. You know, I don't understand. Yeah. So Beth, do you know of other people with dry eyes that have gotten really good results? I don't specifically have people who have had dry eye problems. Um, I, we haven't come across that, and neither of us do that. Have you? I'd love to know if you have an idea, Nina, for that. No, the only reason I ask that is because I have a client that's tried so many different things, and ah. 